Welcome to BBC London News. I'm Alice Bandukravi. Campaigners for Jean-Charles de Menezes say they're disappointed that the police officer who oversaw the operation which ended in his fatal shooting has been honoured. Scotland Yard Assistant Commissioner Cressida Dick has been awarded a Queen's Police Medal. Although she was cleared of any personal culpability in the killing at Stockwell Tube Station in 2005, his friends say her medal is still insensitive. The most senior police officer has been not only um, um, promoted twice, but is now being um, commended um, uh, today. And we find that that's, that's shocking, considering that no police officer has been held accountable for the killing of Jean Charles. Well, the Metropolitan Police has responded to the criticism about the award by praising Cressida Dick's achievements in the force, especially in tackling organised crime, drugs and terrorism. Suggestions that the man behind the Christmas Day airline bomb plot was radicalised while studying at a London university have been angrily rejected. Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalib was a student at University College London, but today its provost said there was no evidence support to what he called a spectacular insinuation. A 29-year-old man has been remanded in custody for the manslaughter of David Jocelyn, who was killed after trying to stop an argument between two groups of people in Chingford last week. Barry Oliver, who's from Chingford, will appear at the Old Bailey in April. The New Year's Honours List has recognised Dr Claire Birchinger, who in 1984 nursed the victims of the famine in Ethiopia. Dame Claire featured in the news reports filed by Michael Burke, drawing attention to the plight of the Ethiopian people. Since then, she's dedicated her life's work to humanitarian aid. Here's Matthew Morris. Ethiopia, 1984. The BBC's Michael Burke files news reports that send shockwaves around the world. He interviews a young Red Cross nurse from Shearing in Essex. If they're too bad, we know they're going to die. We send them to the hospital because there's nothing we can do. Food won't even help. But making that decision day after day, does that do anything too? Yes, of course it does. What do you expect? Yes, of course it does. It breaks my heart. I remember the just ridiculous questions they were asking, like, what does it make you feel like having to choose which child can come in to feed and which can't? But he got the right answer, you know, it made me hesitate. And I just told him how it broke my heart having to choose. And that's the film that Bob Geldof saw and which motivated him to set up Band Aid and then Live Aid. Claire Birchinger has been recognised for services to nursing and international humanitarian aid. Last month, she went back to Ethiopia. I met children that had been in the feeding centre starving and were now qualifying and getting degrees. I'm, I'm greatly honoured, although very quite startled, that I received this award. I'm not motivated by awards. I will always continue to help people, uh, particularly in resource-poor situations, because... I think that's what we're on this planet for, is to help each other. Dame Claire Birchinger ending that report from Matthew Morris. Now, more than 200,000 people are expected to head into central London tonight to see in 2010. But this year's fireworks display at midnight will be shorter and cheaper than in previous years. Emma North's been on the embankment. Well, just before midnight on this day last year, London's Mayor Boris Johnson was projected onto the Oxo Tower and he paraphrased the film Apocalypse Now. He said one day this recession is going to end. Well, 12 months on, there's no sign of that happening and its effects are now beginning to nibble away a bit at this year's celebrations. Take, for example, the famous fireworks at midnight. Last year, they cost nearly £400,000 and lasted a good 10 minutes. This year, you'll queue in the cold for just an eight-minute display and at £70,000 less cost. And if you want a projection of Boris Johnson, I'm afraid there's going to be none this year. If you want to see his message, you have to go on YouTube. There's cost-cutting too when it comes to travel. If you're trying to get home on the mainline trains, well, you might have to pay. And that's because the Mayor's office has withdrawn a subsidy of about £100,000 to rail companies. The rail companies have said, without this subsidy, passengers are going to have to pay. But rest assured, say TfL, if you're trying to get a tram, a bus or the Docklands Light Railway home from this year's festivities, they will be free between quarter to midnight and half past four on New Year's morning. Emma North there. Now, it's been quite a decade for London's art and cultural scene, and this week we've been looking back at some of the many highlights. Here's our arts correspondent, Brenda Romanis. With its masterful puppetry, the National Theatre's adaptation of Michael Morpurgo's children's book, War Horse, won the hearts of critics and audiences and is one of the major London box office successes at the latter part of this decade. 
Despite the economic downturn, London's Theatreland stood the challenge. It appeared that when the going got tough, Londoners sought cultural inspiration. The decade is littered with successful musicals, with the likes of Hairspray, Billy Elliot and Mamma Mia amongst those scooping awards and packing in audiences. It's been a fantastic decade, more and more people coming to the theatre, which in itself has made it a confident decade. I think, I think we end the decade much more in better shape than we were at the start. The South Bank had a major facelift over the last decade with the £118 million restoration of the Royal Festival Hall, a significant part of its new look. It took a long time to get to the point it has now reached, but I, I really feel it's, it's an area of town which really has a huge vibrancy in life and people, people love it, people flock there, even just to hang out, it's just one of those places. During the noughties, we became a nation obsessed with dance. Be it on ice, on the streets, on a dance floor or on stage, Londoners indulged their happy feet. Both independent filmmakers and major studios chose London for locations. Blockbusters like the Bond franchise and Harry Potter's were all filmed here and the technical skills of our specialist production houses were in much demand. We've established and consolidated a position for ourselves um, as one of the really major filmmaking um, capitals of the world. So culturally it's been a decade to celebrate. Brenda Imanis, BBC London News. Wendy's here now to tell us what to expect from the weather. Hello, Wendy. Hello, very good evening to you. Well, if you're heading outside to see in the... Wendy, thank you. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon. But from all of us on the team, whatever you're doing, do have a lovely New Year's Eve. Bye-bye.